is your business ready for 5th of April? By the end of the tax year, business owners, sole traders and employees should be maximising available tax reliefs. We're going to cover some of our top tips for the upcoming financial year end and what you need to do before it arrives. With advice from the financial experts, you can start to plan ahead, safe in the knowledge that you've made the most of tax incentives before the deadline. Um, it can mean a reduction in your tax bill and making the most of um, unused relief brought forward or due to expire before the end of the tax year. For example, utilising the tax-free dividend allowance, utilising your personal allowance, making pension contributions, making charitable donations, trading loss claims, investing in capital items to claim capital allowances and reducing your taxable profits. This depends on your accounting year, um, date that falls within the tax year. For most 31st of March or 5th of April year ends, it will be sensible to purchase capital expenditure before the accounting year ends, so any capital allowances can be maximised to reduce the tax bill. We currently have a million pounds worth of annual investment allowance for qualifying expenditure available for 100% relief. There are strict deadlines for claiming capital allowances and these can result in a significant tax savings, so should be considered very carefully. Uh, it would be prudent to make use of the annual capital gains tax exemption um, each year because if it's not used, it's lost. Um, also, if you have disposed of assets with a gain and have assets which are currently carrying a loss, you may want to sell these in the same tax year to offset the chargeable gain and reduce your exposure to capital gains tax. Um, it, it, it may be prudent to hold on to the shares if they are paying a good return. However, if the company is not performing well, it might be better to sell them. If you have assets that are carrying a capital loss, it may be sensible to sell these if you have a realised capital gain in the same or subsequent tax year. The capital losses can reduce gains in the same tax year or can be carried forward to set off any future tax years. Well, this really does depend on the level of taxable profits or losses and how much each individual wishes to extract from the business. Generally, limited companies offer the most tax efficient business structure because they have different tax arrangements to other businesses. However, it will also depend on whether the initial startup business is loss making or not. Losses in opening years of a new business can be offset for tax purposes against other income, which could provide a useful tax refund. Uh, by extracting funds from the business by other means, um, paying a low salary and compensating with dividends which have lower income tax rates and no national insurance contributions is, is, is the norm. Alternatively, the company could make a pension contribution on the director's behalf whilst obtaining corporation tax relief, which at the moment is a maximum of 25%. Um, if you're self-employed, this will depend on your level of profits, but generally, if you are a high rate taxpayer, it will mitigate the additional tax above the 20% uh, basic rate band if you make a contribution. It uh, may also reduce any exposure to the clawback of the high income child benefit charge where your taxable income exceeds £50,000 in the tax year. If you're a company director stroke shareholder, your company can contribute to your pension. As it is an allowable business expense, your company can get tax relief against corporation tax, so the company could save up to 25% in corporation tax. The rules currently allow you to put a maximum of £60,000 gross into your pension each tax year. This is limited to your net relevant earnings. Any unused pension annual allowance for the three previous tax years can be carried forward and used to make larger contributions, uh, but that's assuming there are sufficient net relevant earnings to cover it. Donations to charities are tax free and if you pay income tax, you can include 20% income tax as gift aid. So the charity gets this in addition to your net donation. If you are a higher rate taxpayer, you can also get an additional 20% tax relief against your tax bill. 
As the gross donation extends your basic rate tax band, it would be sensible tax planning to make a one-off contribution to reduce your exposure to higher rate tax or to avoid a claw clawback of the high income child benefit charge. That's assuming your taxable income exceeds £50,000 in the tax year. Yeah, the dividend allowance is falling to, two, to £500 from 6th of April 24. However, the dividend tax rate is still 8.75% for basic rate taxpayers, 33.75% for higher rate taxpayers and 39.35% for additional rate taxpayers. The dividend rates are still generally cheaper than taking a larger salary. Drawing a small dividend, sorry, no, drawing a small salary up to the national insurance limit and taking a, a dividend above this level remains tax efficient for most taxpayers.